Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 2-1 of May, June 2022. So let's move on to question number one. Obviously, here we can use a calculator. Uh, let's see what happens. So part one we have. In 2020, the running cost of Frederick's car was this much. So it cost him this much every year. Sorry, in 2020, to run his car, to maintain his car, right? Now, part one, 28% of the cost was spent on insurance so let's find out how much was actually spent on insurance 28 percent is 28 over 100 times 5200 28 divided by 100 times 5200 that should be 1456 that was spent on insurance for that year next one 3 over 25 of the cost was spent on maintenance. So let's find out how much is that. 3 over 25 times 5200. Okay. So 3 divided by 25 times 5200. That should be 624. And then what else? 740 was spent on tax. So 740 was spent on tax. And the remainder, the remainder of this was spent on patrol. So let's first find out what is the sum of all these costs that we know. That will be 1456 plus 624 plus 740. That should be 2820. Okay. So question part one is we have to use the values above or the information above to find the amount he spent on patrol. Now the patrol was the remainder, which means we have to take 520 zero minus all this which is 2820 that will give you what that will give you 2380 as your answer for question part one this is the amount he spent on patrol part one now for part two we have in 2021 the tax increased by 1.5 percent what is the new tax in 2021 so we know that in 2020, right, we have seen he paid 740 in tax. So 2020 was 740 in tax. If this is increased by 1.5%, so how much is 1.5%? Let's find out. So 1.5% is written as 1.5% is just 1.5 divided by 100 times the initial amount, which is 740. We're going to find the amount it was increased by. That will be 11.1. Now, from now on, obviously, we're trying to find the new tax. The new tax will be, the tax in 2021 will be the initial amount plus the increase, right? Because this was the increase percentage. We have to add 11.1, and that should be 7.51 and 10 cents. That will be the new uh, tax amount he will pay in 2021. Now let's move on to part B of your question. Now in January, the cost of petrol is $2.2 per liter, which means uh, I do understand that one liter will cost me $2.2. All right. Now, part one, find the cost of 38.7 liters. So if one liter costs this much, 38.7 liters will be what? Obviously, we can just use multiplication have to multiply by this one. The idea is if one costs this much, 38.7 will have to be what we have to. How, how can you change one to this much? Have to multiply by 38.7 on both sides. So you have to multiply here, you get this, and this as well to get this one. So 20, 220 times 38.7. So I guess uh, it also a very similar way of, of looking at the question is also, we can also think of, let's say I can tell you one apple is five dollars, how much is is ten apple? You would say obviously one is five, ten will be five times ten, that will be fifty. So same way here, one is this much, thirty-eight point seven will be multiplied by the liters. That will be eighty-five point fourteen. Now for part two, uh, the average cost of petrols, uh, petrol the average amount, sorry, amount of petrol that his car uses is seven liters per hundred km so I do understand that so if I have seven liters the car will run 100 km this is given information by the question 
Now, in January, he spent $215.6 on petrol. Okay. So I do know that $2.2 is equal to 1 liter, according to your question. Now, I can also say $1 will be 1 divided by 2.2 liters. So you will, get, you will get this much liters for $1. Now, the idea there is that he spent this much dollar on petrol, so how much liters he will get? So for this much dollars, that will be obviously, if one is this much, this will have to be taken this much times this one, right? 215.6. One divided by 2.2 .2 times 215.6. That will be 98 liters. Okay, so we understand that he uh, received 98 liters of petrol when he used 215.60 cents for, for buying them. Now the question will be what? We have to find the number of lead of km, number of km he drives in that month. So we have to use that information. We were told that seven liters is equal to 100 km. Obviously by ratio, one liter will be this divided by seven km. Hence, we understand that we have used 98 liters, that will be this over this times 98. So 100 divided by 7 times 98, that should be 1400. So for part 2, that will be 1400 km. Now let's move on to part 3 of the question. Uh, in February, the cost of petrol increases to 2.24. We know that in January, the cost was 2.20, right? It was increased to 2.24 in that month. Now we have to find the percentage increase in the cost. Now, obviously we have to know the formula for this one. The percentage increase is equal to the increase divided by the initial cost. So original cost times 100. So what is the increase? We take the new cost minus the old cost divided by the initial cost, which is the old cost, times 100 for the percentage. That will be 2.24 minus 2.2 .2 divided by 2.2 .2 times 100. That should be 1.82 correct to 3SF for your value of percentage increase for your question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. So here are the first four patterns in the sequence made using gray tiles and white tiles. Okay, so we have pattern one, two, and three, four given to you. We have to first complete the table. So one by one, for pattern number four, let's complete these ones by observation, obviously. Number of gray tiles, let's count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have 18 gray tiles. Now for the white, let's have a look. For white, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So on this side, we have 16, but also we know on this side, we also have the same thing, 16 as well. Obviously, in total, that will be 32. Now together, that will be what? 18 plus this, that will give you what? 18 plus 32, that should be 50. Of course, we can use the calculator to double check. That'll be 50. Okay, so we can see that um, for four, pattern number four, we can do this by observation. Now, pattern number five, we have to see what's happening exactly at every pattern to, so we can derive the fifth pattern. So let's have a look. For the number of gray tiles, we can see clearly that every time it is increasing by the same amount. By, by what? By plus four, plus four, plus four, so plus four. That should be what? 22, right? And now what is happening to this one? Let's see. So from what I can see, again by observation, I am just um, observing this. Here I have plus six, here I have plus 10, here I have plus uh, 14. So here we'll have, we'll have what? Plus 18. Because why? Because let me write this down again, some place over here. I have 2, 18, 32. Here I have plus 6, right? I can see we have plus 10 over here. Plus 4, 
plus uh, 14. So the next one will obviously be plus 18. Why? Because you can see every time it is increasing by by 4, right? So 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. 14 plus 4 will be 18. So we have to increase by uh, a constant increase of 4 among the increase. That makes sense. So that will be 50 over here. So the answer here will be 50. Or we can just do the observation. You can see here, like this, this. So obviously, this will become this as well. My observation as well. So we can add these two. That should be 7, 2. Okay, and that will be uh, part A of your question. Now let's move on to part B. So we have to find an expression in terms of n for the number of gray tiles in pattern n. Okay, so we have to find that. So this is not too bad. This is pretty simple. As you can see, we have 6, 10, 14, 18, and 22. Every time we're increasing by the same amount, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, and plus 4, right? Because of that, I can write plus 4n to begin with. Now, obviously, I can try. So what n equal to 1, which is the first term, that will be 4 times 1, and I will have 4. But we know that the real answer is actually 6, right? For the first term, should be 6. How can you make 4 become 6? We have to add 2. So we add 2 here as well. That should be 4n plus 2. So the end term for this one will be 4n plus 2 for the gray tiles. Now for part C, we have a pattern K has uh, 98 gray tiles. Okay? Find K. So pretty easy. When n is equal to K, my result, I used 98 gray tiles. So using my equation here, I have 4 times K plus 2 will give me 98. And 4K have to be 96. So K have to be what? 4, that should be 24 as your answer for question part C. Okay, so let's move on to part D of your question. So here we have to find an expression in terms of n for the number of white tiles in pattern n. So n, we have what? Let me write this down. For the white tiles I have, this is one, first term, second term, third, fourth, and fifth. Right. I have uh, 2, 8, 18, 32, and 50. Right. So from what I can see here, the increase is not the same. So obviously, we cannot use the previous method. But we can kind of use observation here. So what else can we do? We know that n can sometimes be expressed as its square or it's a cube term, we can try, we can try to find out. Again, this is something we can do by trial as well. There's no set method to uh, find the n term. We always observe and see what is the most um, uh, convenient or the most uh, reasonable or the most logical way when you look at this diagram as well. So to find the fourth term, we realize one of the ways we did was we counted one side and then multiply by two because this side is the same as this side. So if we look at the third term as well, if you count this side, we will have 9 over here, we will have 9 over here, the third term. Pattern number 2, we will have 4 over here, we will have 4 over here. And for 1, we have 1 over here, 1 over here. Right, so what is what can we see here? What, what, what are the numbers 1, 4, 9, 6? So where have we seen these numbers, 1, 4, 9, and 16? Right, so we do understand that these are square numbers, right? So 1, 4, 9, 16. So 1 is just 1 square, 4 is 2 square, 9 is 3 square, this is 4 square. So the idea behind is, uh, by observation, obviously, I realized that what I was happening was, from the way I found this white stuff, I first counted here and then multiplied by 2, right? So the same idea I see behind this. So to find 2 here, I took 2, multiply by 1, square. To find 8 here, I took 2, multiplied by 2, square. To find 18 here, I took 2, multiply by 3 square, 2, 4 square, 2, 5 square, and so on. So if it was n, that will be 2 times 
n square. As you can see, when it was 1, 1 square, 2, 2 square. As, again, this is solved by observation. And uh, again, with experience, with practice, you know, if you did a lot of questions regarding this, this, this will, will most likely be obvious to you. But if you don't have practice enough, it might be tough to realize at first glance. But again, this is nothing new. So your answer will be 2 n square for the n term. Now for part E, uh, we have to find the total number, the total number of tiles in pattern 20. So now when n is equal to 20. So obviously we can find a uh, number of, of gray tiles. Wait, wait, what? Gray tiles will be 4 times 20 plus 2. The number of white tiles will be 2 times 20 squared using the, the formula for both that we uh, just found, we can find that. So 4 times 20 plus 2 plus 2 times 20 squared, that should be 882 as your answer for the number of, the total number of tiles in pattern 20. Okay, so that will be uh, your question number 2. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> The graph shows the cost in dollars uh, of buying length of fabric t meters long. So for example, how do you read this? So here we have the length of fabric and the cost. For example, here we have, as the length increases, the cost will increase. Logically, if you buy something, uh, more of something, the cost will increase as well. So as you can see, it is directly proportional to, to the cost. Now part one, you have to use the graph to find the cost of buying 3.8 meters of fabric. So obviously we have to use the graph, we have to show our working for this answer. So where is 3.8? So by uh, obviously observing, measuring, this is 3.5, 6, 7, 8 should be right here. Now we have to find the corresponding costs on the graph. That will be this, and we have to join on the y-axis, right here. This value will be what? So 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 28. According to my graph, it shows to be $28 will be the cost of 3.8 meters of fabric. Now for part two, Samira buys K meters, so we don't know how much exactly for now. Now she pays with a note of $20, she receives 1.5 change. So for how much she paid? How, how much she paid? So we do know that she spent 20 and received 1.5 in change. So she actually paid how much? She will pay. So 20, Minus 1.5, 18.5, yep, 18.5. So she paid 18.5 dollars for the fabric. So now we use the graph again. So let's go find 18.5. This is 10. This is 15. This is 18. 18.5 will be right in between right here. So 18.5, we have to find the corresponding value. Meters, that should be something over here right here and this shows to be exactly at 2.5 according to my graph obviously your answer may be uh, somewhere around that and that's okay as long as you show your work how you found that you should be okay so 2k will be 2.5 meters or 2.5 for the value of k as uh, required for part two now for part b anita cuts uh, 10 meters of fabric into three lengths uh, to make a blouse a skirt and a dress okay so we begin with 10 meters now, the length of fabric needed to make a blouse, skirt, and dress, so blouse, skirt, and dress, is in this ratio, okay? So find the length of fabric that is cut to make a dress. Dress will be this one. So the ratio is given to you, so let's find out what is the sum of all this. That will be 6 plus 8 plus 11. So basically we need to have 25 pieces formed from the cloth. Now we do understand that to make the dress, I need 11 of those pieces of those 25 pieces times 10 for the meters that we need. So how much do we need? That will be 11 divided by 25 times 10. That should be 4.4 meters to make that dress according to the ratio given to us. So 4.4 meters right here to make that dress. Again, 
we only we only care about the dress here we know the dress has 11 for its ratio so total pieces so we have 6 8 and 11 so with total we have 25 we got everything so the idea is let's say we cut the 10 meters fabric into 25 small pieces now we understand that 11 of those pieces are required to make the dress so we take 11 from the 25 piece and then times the 10 meters to find out exactly how much those 11 pieces add up in meters that will give you 4.4 meters for that dress this is the idea behind this question that will be part b and let's move on to uh, part c of your question the upper bound for the area of a rectangular piece of fabric is this one again let's see we have a rectangle right let's say we have a rectangle piece of fabric so this is i hope you guys know the shape of a rectangle by now if you don't then uh, okay you have you have some some problems this is obviously let's call this the x and this, let's call this y right why not this is the width and the length now how do you find the area of a rectangle so the area the area will be obviously the width times the length or the length of the width right so we know this for now at least that's what we know so the upper bound the upper bound for the area is given to you by this so the upper bound so area upper bound is given to you by 8.8125 okay now the width of the piece of fabric is 2.5 correct to the nearest 0.1 mm the length of uh, the length of the piece of fabric is d meters correct to the nearest 0.1 mm okay we have to find the value of d pretty easy let's find out the value of d so first thing first um, obviously we have to use that information so as you can see here it is a question of upper bound lower bound if that makes sense so let's first find the lower and upper bound of those values 2.3 uh, plus minus 0 0.1 divided by 2. Again, this is just a formula that we know that we use to help us. For the width, the upper bound will be what? So that will be 2.35 and that will be 2.25 for the lower bound. And for the length, that will be d plus minus 0 0.1 over 2. The upper bound will be uh, d plus 0 0.05 uh, and d minus 0 0.05 this is the upper and lower bound so now we do understand that uh, to find uh, to find what to find the upper bound of the area obviously as you can see area is found by x times y so to, for it to have the maximum value the upper bound the maximum value we take the max width 2.23 sorry 2.35 times the maximum value for d as well will be this one right and this is supposed to give you 8.8125 now since we have this equation now we can solve for the value of d again to find the maximum value for area which is the upper bound for area we have we have to take the upper bound for the width and the upper bound for the length to find that so this is the the width upper bound times length upper bound to find the area upper bound so that's the logic behind this is how you form that equation now we can solve for the value of d which is 0 0.05 should be what this divide by this so 8.8125 divided by 2.35 that should be 3.75 so finally d has to be minus 0 0.05 that should be 3.7 as your value of d Okay, and that will be your question, part C of question number three. Okay. What has dimension x by x by 10? So what is the shape of a cuboid? So we do understand the cuboid is simply a box. For example, let's say we have something like that, right? So that will be your cuboid, it's just a box, right? It's nothing um, crazy. So this will be x by x and by 10, right? Now, the volume of the cuboid is given to you by 62.5. We have to find the value of x. So how do you find the volume of a cuboid? So the volume is the length times the width and times the height. That will be x squared is going to give you 62.5 according to the question. Now, x squared will be obviously 6.25 and x will be 
square root of that, that should be what? 2.5 for your value of x. That is part A of your question. Now for part B, let's see what do we have. So a piece of card, A O B, is a sector of a circle, center O. Okay, good. And um, angle is 84, radius is 15. So obviously we do understand that O B and O A have to be the same because they are both radius of the same circle. Now, question part one. We have to show the length of the arc AB is 7 pi. So how do you find this? We have to use the formula, obviously. That will be the angle, which is 84 degrees over 360 times 2 pi r. So this is how you find the, the length of the arc in O-level paper 2. So let's replace. Uh, you will have 84 over divided by 360. That should be 7 over 30 times 2 times pi times radius is 15. Now, obviously, we can try to simplify. Let's see what happens. So you will have this will go away. Divide by 15. This will be 2, right? Because 2 times 15 is 30. And this and this will cancel out. So you will have 7 pi centimeters as your answer for the length of arc AB. Again, this is done by using your formula right here. Now, for part 2, uh, we have OA is joined with OB, so OA and OB, they are joined together to form, to form the curved surface of a cone. Now, what is the shape of a cone? I'm sure you guys have had a, have ice cream before, and the cone is simply something like this, right? The shape like this. If that makes any sense, right? Now, this is the radius that we are trying to find, I believe, and we have the height that we don't know, but we know something. For example, this is uh, OA and OB are joined. So when you join these two, we understand that this length height over here will be what? Will be 15 because this is 15 and this is 15. When you join them, you station together, this will be 15. Now we have the shape of the cone. We have to use that to find the radius of that cone. So the radius here is unknown. How would you find this? So we understand that the area of the sector becomes the curved surface area of the cone. If you use uh, observation or imagination, if you were to join those two, the area of this, it becomes the curved surface area of the cone, right? So how do you find the area of sector? Again, by using your formula, which is 84 degrees over 360 times pi r square. That will be uh, 7 over 30 times pi, and that will be 15 square. And that will be what? So 15 square times 7 divided by 30. That should be 52.5 pi for the area of the sector AOB. Now we understand that the area of a sector is the same as the curved surface area of the cone. So how did you find the curved surface area of cone? That is equal to pi r l that we have to know. This is something we have to know to solve this. The curved surface area of the cone is pi or l. Pi is pi, we don't know. I mean, we know, obviously, it's a constant. Radius, we don't know. And l, obviously, is the slant height, which is this one, just 15. So write 15, and that is supposed to give you 52.5 pi. So this and this cancel out. The radius will be 52.5 divided by 15. That is 3.5. Radius will be 3.5 centimeters and that is your answer for question part two now let's move on to part three part three is we have to find the height of the cone so it's not too bad so we have the cone here the shape all right this is the kind of the radius here and this is the height this is the height and this is the slant height 15. And we found the radius was 3.5. Now, by observation, we can take the shape outside. Let's take this one out. Let's say we have this, this, and this. What is that shape? You see? Right angle, triangle, obviously. That is the height. That is 15. And that is 3.5. So how would you find this side? Obviously, by using the Pythagoras theorem, which says 15 square is equal to h square plus 3.5 square. So h square will be 15 square minus 3.5 square, that should be 212.75. So the height will be square root of that. That should be 14.6, correct to 3SF. 
Okay, and that will be part three of your question. Now for part C, we have an empty barrel in the shape of a cylinder. Now what is the shape of a cylinder? We should know. It's something like this. That's what we think of as a cylinder. The radius is 20. This is the radius right here, 20. And the height is 80. This is the height, which is 80. Okay. Uh, the barrel is filled with water at a rate of uh, this one. So we are adding water at the rate of 5, 5,000 cm cube per minute. Now, we have to find the time uh, for it to, the time taken to completely fill the barrel. Give you answers in minutes and seconds. So pretty easy, we, have, we first have to find what is the volume? How much water can the barrel contain? So how do you find the volume of a cylinder? Because the barrel is the shape of a cylinder, we have to find the volume of the cylinder. That will be pi r square h, right? Pi is pi, r square is 20, square h is 80. So the volume will be 20 square times 80 times pi. That will be 1005 30.965 centimeters cube. This is the volume of the barrel. Now we understand that to put, it takes, um, so for this much volume to go in, right, it takes you one minute. This is the rate at which we are putting this in, right? So we have to fill this much. So we know for one centimeter cube, it will take me one over 5,500 minutes. So for this, how much will it take you? Again, we're using ratio here, so it should not be that bad. So we understand that 10053.965 centimeters cube have to take us one over 5500 times 100530.965. So 1 divided by 5500 times 100530.965. That will be 18.2783536. So you will take a full 18 minutes, so 18 minutes, and the rest. So the rest is 0 0.27836 minutes. So how much is that in seconds? So we can convert, obviously. To convert minutes, so we know one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So to convert that, we have to multiply this by, by 60. So 0 0.27836 times 60, that should be 16.7016. Correct to the nearest second, so that will be 16, that should be 17 seconds. Because it is 16.7, so we have to round this up to the nearest second, that will be 17. So 18 minutes and 17 seconds for the time taken to fill up the barrel. This is your question number four. Now let's move on to question number five. So we have to complete the table below for, uh, for this one. So we have y equal to this equation. As you can see, by first look, it is a cubic equation because of x power three is a cubic equation. Now we have this missing value here. When x equal to minus three, what is the value of y? Replace, y will be minus three cube minus four times minus three plus three. So minus three cube minus four times minus three plus three, that will be minus 12. So minus 12 here will be your value, right? So that'll be minus 27 plus 12 plus 3. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now let's plot the graph. So the first point we have is minus 3 minus 12. So this is uh, minus 11 minus 12. Should be something over here. Minus 3 minus 12. Then we have minus 2, 3, minus 2, 3. So 2 is here. That should be 1, 2, and 3. And then we have minus 1, 6. 6 will be right here. Okay, 0, 3. 0, 3 will be 1, 2, and 3. Again, 2 square here. 2 square represents 1. This is 1, right? So 1, 2, 3. 
and then we have one zero one zero will be right here and then two three will be uh, on the top that should be and then 318 18 will be on the top over here so that'll be 19 18 okay so I'm gonna try our best to join uh, the points in this graph with a smooth uh, curve we have to use a pencil obviously don't use a pen uh, you will be penalized in your exam you have to use a pencil but yeah try your best to join them so this will be joined with this one Join with this. This. Join with this. Right, as you can see, we have a cubic curve in this shape with two uh, stationary value, the maximum point. So here you go. So we have this one uh, and that one is good. So for those range done, part B is done. Again, part B is just using those points and join them on the graph with a smooth curve. Try your best to make it as smooth as possible. Now, what else do we have? So part C, we have to do what? By drawing a suitable line on your curve, find the solution to this. Again, whenever you see this question, it means we have to find the equation to draw. And to find that, we have to always use your main equation. So let me write this down. The main equation given to you was y equal to x power 3 minus 4x plus 3. Now, by observation, I can see that this and this are the same. So let's make this become subject. So x power 3 minus 4x is equal to what? We send this one over here, become y minus 3. Now let's replace this by this. So you will have y minus 3 minus 2 is equal to 0. So y will be 5. So now we have this equation to draw. Draw y equal to 5 and find the solution. So y equal to 5 will be a horizontal line over here. You have to draw the line. And don't forget to label this as y equal to 5. Also, don't forget to label your curve as well as y equal to x cubed minus 4x plus 3. Right. So we have to find the corresponding value of x solution. So we have to see where it meets the, the graph. It meets the graph right here. It meets the graph right here on this point. And it meets the graph on this point. Again, you have to show those values uh, on your graph for your answer. The first one shows to be minus 1.7. And we have minus 0 0.6, and then I have 2.2. Again, your answer may vary. It may be different depending on how you draw your graph, right? So, But you have to show your work. The, the main point is you have to show this equation, and then you have to show the graph you're drawn on the, on the diagram above for your answers. And this is your question number five. Hey, so that was the first half of the video. I hope it was somewhat helpful. To access the full video, go on the main page. There's a link named Patreon right here. Otherwise, go in the description below as well. You will see a link to access my Patreon. With that being said, thank you for watching and all the best for your exams. Cheers.